Chances are, if you're watching this video, you'll know of my animation catalogue on the Kanzenshu forums. It's a thread that covers the styles of the various animation supervisors on Dragon Ball Super, alongside documenting the standout moments from the key animators under them. At the moment, it contains a brief history of each supervisor, and primarily focuses on stills to highlight the stylistic differences between each artist's character art. This video series aims to accompany that thread by providing a deeper insight into each animator by stepping outside of just Dragon Ball and looking at their work throughout their career. What are they known for? What series drastically changed their approach to animation, and how did they end up where they are today? The most recent episode of Dragon Ball Super as of this video was by Masahiro Shimanuki, who's been working on Dragon Ball on and off for over 30 years. Given such an extensive history, he seemed like a good place to start. Like the vast majority of animators entering the industry, Shimanuki began his career as an in-between artist. Working at Studio Seigasha on the anime adaptation of Akira Toriyama's Dr. Slump, it wasn't too surprising that he would find himself in the next Toriyama adaptation, Dragon Ball. His work as an in-betweener must have impressed the higher-ups, because by episode 19 of Dragon Ball, he'd been promoted to a key animator role working under Tomokichi Takeuchi, one of the biggest supervisors on Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, and even the earliest parts of Dragon Ball Z. Shimanuki's style really became apparent as the series passed the Red Ribbon arc. His skills seemed to lie in his effects animation, meaning his ability to animate things like smoke, beams, and especially debris. Anything involving vehicles, explosions, and things crashing into each other seemed to be the primary scenes that Shimanuki was given to animate. He would go out of his way to draw hundreds of individual pieces of rubble that would have taken hours to animate, but the results look incredible. In a series that has a strong focus on showcases of power, being able to draw characters smashing things into millions of pieces is a really valuable asset. His explosions were really interesting to look at too. The fire was drawn almost like bits of paper floating in the wind, and the actual explosions themselves were this cool mix of angular spikes to showcase the impact, and smooth curves coming out to illustrate the billowing smoke. Shimanuki's a master of effect and it's a fairly consistent element that you'll find in his animation throughout this video. Towards the end of Dragon Ball and onwards into Z, his ability as an action animator came to light. Though never particularly fluid like fellow animator Kazuya Hisada, his work at least had a strong sense of timing, with a real focus on the impact of each hit. He would use excessive action lines in conjunction with motion lines, and with each impact he would hold the pose and shake the relevant parts of the body to really convey the full force of the blow. It's not particularly flashy animation, but it's effective in conveying what it needs to, while remaining conservative enough for a weekly TV series. Following episode 16, of Z, Shimanuki's supervisor Takeuchi would step down and stick to key animation, leaving Hisada and Shimanuki to take turns as supervisors for the remainder of the series. This was due to Takeuchi's rounder character art feeling more suitable for the earlier parts of the series, while Shimanuki and Hisada's were much more angular and fitting for the character designs at the time. With Shimanuki at the helm of episodes, his character art was now able to shine through uninhibited by supervisor corrections. He favoured large, pointy, elf-like ears, small teardrop-shaped noses, and spectacularly detailed angular muscles. He would also draw the eyes a lot smaller than normal, leaving room around the edge of the face. It was a hugely recognisable style that stood out among the other episodes, and even when he put his touch on other series. As Z ended and GT began, Hisada would take over the supervisor role, and Shimanuki would remain a key animator throughout the rest of the series. Their partnership would shape each other's careers, with Hisada taking on a supervisor role throughout Dr. Slump and One Piece, with Shimanuki following suit as a key animator, before eventually being promoted to a recurring supervisor from episode 315 onwards. With other jobs here and there, and some creature designs for Toriko aside, Shimanuki would work almost exclusively on One Piece from 1999 right through until 2015. While he certainly brought his own work into the show, making his episodes instantly recognisable, though not hugely popular within the One Piece fandom, he also took a lot away from it. In 2005, Shimanuki was responsible for the intro video for the game Dragon Ball Z Sagas, and what we saw was a lot more One Piece than Dragon Ball. Ears were placed down towards the bottom of the jaw, facial features were more vertical squashed and bodies were incredibly skinny. Nothing about it was badly drawn, but it wasn't very Dragon Ball. In 2013, we got another glimpse at Shimanuki's ability to draw Dragon Ball with the Toriko One Piece Dragon Ball Z crossover special. Characters like Gohan and Kurillin were sporting wide faces and features that were very clearly influenced by his work on One Piece. 
2015 rolled around and Dragon Ball Super was announced. In episode 8, Shimanuki made his debut as an animation supervisor, and despite only providing uncredited key animation for the episode, we did get a glimpse of what his style had become. While the features were better space, the jaws were still quite rounded and the faces incredibly wide. It was a far cry from the Shimanuki fans had come to know from the original series. It wasn't until episode 25 that Shimanuki began to get to grips better with his older work. Although it certainly wasn't perfect, it was at least an improvement and an indicator that he had been re examining his older work. Episode 30 marked a huge turning point for Shimanuki, with characters looking almost 100% back to normal, but also respecting the series' new character designs. Faces were a normal length, the ears were in a correct position, and despite being mostly a recap episode, we got a little peek at some current day Shimanuki action. It wasn't anything special, but it was certainly very him. As the show made its way through the Universe 6 tournament, we hit episode 36 and finally saw the return of Shimanuki with the end of Vegeta's final flash. The debris was back, the shaking limbs were back, and the character art looked excellent. He's improved and improved and improved, and as of the current future Trunks arc, he's almost consistently on point. Episode 54 is the closest his work has been to his heyday so far, and while I don't think he'll ever be back to 100% thanks to his age and the series' schedule, I do think he's one of the best supervisors on the show. The longer he works on Super, the more his work is bound to look like Dragon Ball. I certainly look forward to his episodes, and I hope you do too. Next time, we'll be looking at one of Shimanuki's old underlings who has since become one of the top animators at Toei and has far surpassed many of his old superiors. I'm sure you can guess who it is in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in staying up to date. But for now, I will see you next time.